Your teen requested a ride, but this time not from you. It's through their Uber teen account. You drive your teenager around a lot to their friend Jacob's house, their other friend Jake's house, to James's, to Jaden's, to Jalen's, to. Oh, uh, mom, this is Jake's house, not Jacob's. Now with an Uber teen account, your teen can request a ride under your supervision. The ride with a highly rated driver, and with live trip tracking, you'll follow along the whole ride to their friends' houses that all sound the same. Add your teen to your Uber account today. See app for details. Bye, mom. You are listening to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Be amazed. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. Students, mad scientists, and all you techno geeks all across our fair city. It's another gorgeous day here in the Berg of Tomorrow. Good morning, Baylor! That's right, it's your morning cup of audio java, and I am your humble barrister. That's right, it's me, Dokes, hauling your lazy, mangled, hungover keisters all the way until noon. Yes, I do say hungover. I know that for a fact because I was right there last night. I was a witness to the accident, and uh, I have to say something. I really do. All seriousness. I think I can safely report that entirely too many of you are lightweights. Lightweights. In fact, calling you that is almost an insult to something as useful as light. What is this generation coming to when we can't drink more than four drinks at a time and not fall on the floor in a puddle of sick? I swear to heaven above, I saw more collateral damage being shifted out of that club last night as I've seen in... Well, with a sin ever, really. It's enough to make you sob into your lager. It really, really is. Now, I know, I know, it's exam time and all. And you people are probably a little bit out of shape. But seriously, come on, people. We have a reputation to uphold. This is a party town. I'm, I'm just ashamed. I weep for us all. Now, I think you've been properly chastised enough, so I shall taunt you no further. Let's get this show on the road, right, Buffins? I've got music, I've got news, I've got weather, I've got music, I've got the schedule for the hottest clubs and the hottest shows this night and every night, and, um, did I mention I've got music? I did? Hang on, did I? Well, hang on, yes, yes, I did! We've got music! And here's some right now, so cuddle up with your favourite hangover portion of the hair of whatever took the bite out of you last night, and keep it tuned right here to the voice of the future. You are listening to Baylor One. Welcome back to the land of the living. Hope you didn't mind the radio waking you up there, but that's the first sign of civilization we've had in quite a while. Turvy, is that you? They said to go into the light. Am Uh, I here? Am I here? Oh, for God's friggin' sake, you don't have to be so melodramatic about it. There's coffee in the thermos. Is there? Then they did take me into heaven. Yay me. Yeah, yeah. Pour me a cup, too, while you're at it. Don't skimp on the amaretto, Sir Phillips. I'm an old man. I need my sustenance. Right. One for me, too, please, Hanover. When do you ever need coffee after sleeping, Nero? Well, never, of course. I just like the wired part. Oh, you goblins with your lives on the ragged edge of disaster. Oh, you humans with your soft, pillowy existences. That's me. So... Is that civilization I hear on the radio? Yep, Baylor One, the voice of the future. So are we there yet? Well, I just picked up the signal loud and clear, so probably about an hour out. Oh, man, that long? Really? You should be happy about that, Hanover. It'll give us a chance to properly clean up. We have been sleeping on a bus for hours now. Well, if you don't mind my saying so, you are going to be going to the geek capital of the world. I don't think they'll notice if you're a bit disheveled and smelly. I'll notice. And besides, I'm a squire. It's my job to look after the welfare of Sir Knight here. Uh, and besides that, you're totally behind the times, Turvy. Am I? Last I heard, not being up on the latest fashions and trends was considered a misdemeanor, never mind being cleaned up. Oh, really? Yeah, really. You know, Turvy, I've been meaning to mention this. For someone who travels as much as you do, you don't see much of the world out from behind the driver's seat of this bus, do you? Well, I don't like to walk much. What can I tell you? (laughs) All right, all right, enough. Don't like what the kids are dancing to these days? I'm an old man. What can I say? Nah, give me house music or nothing. We'll get off your lawn now, Turvy. Come on, Hanover, let's clean you up. Do I get a sponge bath? Only if you're good. What do I get if I'm bad? An intimate cleaning with cold water and a bar of lava soap. Ah, don't even joke about that. Ah, I think there's treaties against stuff like that. Well, then be good and we both stay out of trouble. So, 
An hour out, huh? Yes, this trip is taking a lot longer than it should, isn't it? When we got caught in that dream snare at the rest stop yesterday. I thought that was going to account for why we were on the road for so long, but uh, it doesn't. The road's pushing Baylor away from other civilized areas. Mm-hmm. Possibly to protect them from something bad. Ave Nova. I don't know, maybe. I mean, all I know is the documentation we found in Waterford leaves us here next. That's 20-year-old information, though, Hanover. That worries me even more, to be honest. I mean, look, Metadyne got infected because it bought something, some property that had legally been infected by the Ave Nova Corporation. How many companies in Baylor were listed in that flyer we found in Waterford? I don't know, a dozen or so? Yeah, and 20 years is like a century in corporate culture, and who knows how many times these companies have been changing hands all over the place. If Ave Nova is infecting other corporations, it could be all over this town. Yes, that's true. So why is it happening now? Oh, who knows? I mean, it's probably just laying in wait for its moment to strike. It's waiting for something to happen to trigger it all. So in all likelihood, this isn't just affecting Metadyne, is it? Yes, and that means if there's other corporations involved, they're going to be sending out their knights and agents, too. Well, that's good, isn't it? I mean, this problem is practically all over the Midlands. Can't we use all the help we can get? From a rival corporation? Oh, you're not seriously telling me we're going to be dealing with corporate espionage on top of everything else? Yep. It's Knights of the Round meets James Bond until further notice. Now my head hurts. So you want the shower first or me? You go ahead. I'm finally picking up some decent phone reception. I want to make a few calls. To who? To private, it's none of your business incorporated. My apologies. Accepted, but if you must know, it's actually just to my family and uh, to pick up a few resources. I want to be as ready for what's ahead of us as it's going to be for us. I'm not sure we can get that ready. Oh, quit stinking up the joint and shower already, will you? All right, all right. Presents The Account, A Tale of the Waking World, Relic Skies, Part 1. So you two got all your stuff then? I don't really want to be finding your crap under the sheets later when I have to clean this thing. Yes, I think we've got all our stuff. Thanks, Turvey. I think I may have left my lingerie collection behind. If you find it, feel free to sell it on eBay. You told me you slept naked. I do. They've never been used. You should fetch a pretty good price then. Well, there you go. Extra income for you, Turvey. Thanks. I'll keep that in mind. I tell you two to stay out of trouble, but I'll be wasting my breath. So long. So long, Turvey. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the trip. Bye. He's really sweet. Yeah, I suppose. How long before you think we'll see him again? Well, he's obviously keeping tabs on us, so probably the next bus out of here. So who do you think he's working for, Metadyne? <laughs> After all the BS we put him through? I hope so, otherwise it's going to be serious payback time at some point. Mm. So, Sir Phillips, mm. here we are. Yep. Baylor. Baylor. <laughs> Baylor! I just showered. Please don't get geek all over me. Hey, cut me some slack. I'm a guy, all right? I like my tech toys, and this is one of the tech toy capitals of the world. A fact I can appreciate in spite of my gender. It's just that we're here for a mission not to window shop. Remember that. This place is known for fashion, gadgets, and nightlife, and you're not excited? No. Which is a bald-faced lie, but I have a better poker face about it than you do. As long as we're on the same page. All right, then. Task number one, find a place to stay. Mm-hmm. Task number two... Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Task number two would be not to strain ourselves by thinking too far ahead. All right, so planning's not my strong suit. I've learned to accept that about myself. Why can't you? I know I have to learn to live with my prejudices day by day. Mm. And for your information, we have a place to stay. We do? While you were in the shower, I booked a room at a hotel. Sweet! Now, before we go any further, I'd like to break in and mention something. Like? Unlike the accommodations at the bed and breakfast in Waterford, this is the first time as a partnership we've been booked into a dyed-in-the-wool hotel. Yes. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and suggest that perhaps during the course of our partnership, you've entertained all kinds of, mm, I don't know, fantasies. Fantasies. Yes, fantasies, such as, oh, I don't know, us being inadvertently booked into the same hotel room, Um, having to share digs, you know, having to share each other's intimate space, giving you all kinds of opportunities to do things like, I don't know, ogle my naked body as I step glistening from the shower or as I'm changing in and out of my underwear. Am I right in thinking that thoughts like that may have crossed? To your mind. Well, I. Um. Hmm? You know, goblins are really good at telling when people are lying, so I'll just say I can dream, can't I? Yes. Well, let me put that thought to rest by saying, Congratulations, dreams do come true. Your company was too cheap to book us in anything other than a double. Really? Mm hmm. Well, actually, now that I think about it, that isn't very surprising. Yes, and it's a Blue Lantern budget inn, so it isn't exactly the nicest place in town. Uh. 
Does it at least have a decent continental breakfast? Um, this is me we're talking about here. That was my first consideration. I promise I'll give you all of the privacy you need. Oh, so please. Don't... Anybody who knows me more than three days ends up seeing me naked. I'm a goblin. Practicality always trumps modesty. Mm. What? This is the best job ever. I'll bet it is for you. I'm the one doing all the work. Now get your bags. We've got to walk about six blocks to get to this place. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Let's see, 617, mm. 619, mm. 621. Here Aye. we go. Uh, home away from home. Well, this isn't all that roomy. All right, it's cozy, but at least it's clean. I take it you want dibs on the dresser? Why? Because I'm a girl. I've only got the knapsack, you know. That's a designer knapsack of holding, and you've got like eight changes of clothes in there. You told me yourself. I've only got like the two in my duffel bag. I can live out of I've it. I've been on the road longer than you, and a girl needs her style, thank you very much. So since you offered, I'll take the dresser. Works for me. I'll put mine on the suitcase. St- what? There's a box here, and it's addressed to me. Oh, it's not very big. Who's it from? Doesn't say. Would you mind giving that a once-over? Don't have to ask me twice. Let me see it. Here. Simple cardboard box. Mm-hmm. I don't sense anything dangerous, but that's easy enough to mask. Mm. Hmm. What do you smell? Cardboard. What would I do without you? Oh, you'd probably just be dead in a ditch by the side of the road on fire in the rain or something. Hey, give me some credit. I did make it till before I met you. Well, then count your lucky stars you did. You were probably due for a gruesome death by now. Mm. I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, in that case, hmm. you better open it. All right. We'll just get the thing here. Do it! What? What? What's happening? What? What's happening? I don't know. I just tried to open it and it started screaming at me. Well, what did you do? I didn't do anything. I just tried to open it. You said there was nothing wrong with it. Well, I was wrong, clearly. Now what do we do? I don't know. Throw it out the window. Oh, this is the hotel room. Windows don't open. I have to grab a chair and smash I'm it. I'm not going to oh, smash it. Wait, wait, wait. What? Hold it, what? hold it, what? hold what? it. What? What? That's your ringtone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I I changed it to that because I, I thought it'd be clever. You just answer that. I'll, I'll just answer that. Hello. Ah, Phillips, there That's... you are. You rediscovered the telephone and answered it. Welcome back to the modern age. Hello, Mr. Rayburn. It's good to hear from you. Oh, I... really? I... Well, you know, based on the amount of communication you give my <sighs> office, it's actually a little bit hard to believe that. Yeah, about that. It's just we got a little tied up mm. yesterday, and we well, haven't had time. Well, you need to tell me anything about it. Spare me the details, because I can read all about them in your latest report that I have in front of me, and I can't yeah. help but notice it is over a week old. Yes, well, about and that. And since you were supposed to file daily uh, progress reports yeah. on your quest. That does sort of defeat the purpose if you only send them to me every seven days Look, or so. Look, sorry, Mr. Rayburn. We ran into a snag while we were on the road. I'm sorry. We, what was that again? We got caught in no, a dream... Sorry, sna- can't make so it we, out. Wait, no. Look, no, sir... No, Phillips, you're breaking up. I, I'm afraid this... Sir, this what happened? This is absolutely terrible. Sir, well, this was, sir, where there was a big no, problem... sorry, with- sorry. Still not getting through... I'm very sorry about missing the report, sir. I'll get right on it, and I won't let it happen again. There, the connection's much better now. Heard that loud and clear, and I look forward to reading your report. Hooray. Three cheers indeed. So tell me, have you gotten a look at my package? And don't turn that into a double entendre, no matter how tempting it might be. Sorry? The box? Oh, yeah. Honestly. Yeah, we got that. We got that, sir. Oh, good, good. And might I say, Miss Guillaume, it's good to see you're still working for the company and acting as the brains of the outfit on your end. I try to do my level best, sir. You certainly do, Miss Guillaume, and you'll be happy to know that the box shipped to you as as per your request, contains photo stats made from the microfiche of our accounting department for the last 50 years' worth of business dealings. That way, the Ave Nova bugaboo that's currently running through a digital system wouldn't have a chance to corrupt it. Um, well... Thus ensuring any truth contained therein would not be obfuscated in any way by our supernatural enemy. Bravo and brilliant foresight on your part, Miss Gio. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Yes. It's just that, uh, I hmm? didn't make any requests like that. You didn't? No. Well, who did, then? Check the bottom of the form, sir. What? Let me see this. Archive retrieval information requested by Sir Hanover Phillips. Well, even a broken clock can be right once a day if it's on military time. The other nice thing about a broken clock, too, is that it doesn't expect an apology when it's been insulted to its face continuously for the last few minutes. (sighs) We're We're sorry. sorry. That's more like it. Now, you said you had a list of businesses from 20 years ago that were in and around Baylor that Ave Nova was involved with, didn't you? Yeah, we have it right here. Good. You should be able to cross-index the information that you have with the information that we've sent you. And whatever you do, don't use your laptop to do it. We can't risk that information getting back into a corrupted system. Right. You have updated your laptop recently, haven't uh, you? Well, actually, uh... For God's sakes, Phillips, we sent you expensive equipment. Please, you... I did. just haven't had an opportunity to turn it back on in a few well, days, sir. Don't turn sir. it off, I... then. Just leave it running. It updates automatically via the internet. I don't like leaving... 
leaving it on, sir. It creeps me out. I hate to side against management, sir, but he has got a point. That laptop can be quite unnerving. Well, tough dodge. How do you think we feel on this end? We have to look this thing in the eye every single day. Well, yes. yes. Now, believe you me, that's one unpleasant eye. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, Nero, hand me my laptop. Do I have to touch it? It feels clammy. Just give me the laptop. Oh, all right, here. Now, for the love of God, let that thing update. You need the most current information. Right. And when you're done with that, I want you to fill out the entire report and tell me everything you've been doing for the last few days. We need that information updated. Yes, sir, I'll get right on that right away. get to work on the cross-indexing. And when you're done with that, I want you to go over to the research and development facility that Metadyne has set up there in Baylor. Why? What am I... There's a professor there named McCork. He works in the geostationary satellite division, and he helps train a lot of our students in meta-astrophysics, which is his field of expertise. He has a doctorate in it. Okay. He might be able to answer any questions you have concerning angels. Okay, sir, I've got it. Good, get to work. That's what we're paying you to do, Sir Phillips. Yes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go down to the shipping department and see how the exorcists are doing. Goodbye. Bye. <sighs> well, it is a job, you know. Yeah, but it didn't feel like it sucked until just now. Need me to do anything? No, I think I can handle all of this. Why? I have to go meet someone. You know people in Baylor? I know people everywhere. I get out of the house more often than you do. I have a studio apartment. It's barely a house. Principle still applies, but if you must know, I'm picking up a package that I asked my family to deliver for me. Is it a care package? Are there cookies involved? Can I have some? I'm going out now. Please bring me back cookies. I'll bring you back cookies. Jeez. I like cookies. Okay. Turn on the laptop. I hate that thing. Half hour late. I'm going to have to have a serious word with my family about the tardiness of the couriers. Honestly, I'm supposed to get anything done around here at... Oh, no. No. Way. Dude! Jenkin, I can't believe it's you. I haven't seen you in forever. How are you? Oh, I got Jenkin, Jenkin, ribs. Oh, that's going to look great on a medical report. Bear hug from an ogre. Dude. <sighs> what? Is your back bandaged? Yes. What happened? Nothing you should worry about. Just got into a few scrapes. You know how a girl's life can be. Is this why you called in for the resupply? Because if someone's out to do you bodily disservice, I can kick their ass. No charge. No specific asses need boot prints at the moment, but thanks for the offer. I always appreciate it. My job just took a little escalation on the physical front, so I just thought I'd dial in for a few new weapons with a bit more punch to them. You know, just to be on the safe side. So, do you have a present for me, or what? <laughs> do I? Check this out, dude. <laughs> can't wait, can't wait. I... Oh my god. Are these... You know it. Dude, meet the triplets. Oh my. These are legacy blades. Are these brand new? You know it. Custom R63 rondels, triple strength, and balance for your style rating. They're perfect. Your mom had them made up for you. Special. I, I can't believe... When was this? I don't remember. I think they were supposed to be a birthday present. But since you asked for an upgrade now, she said bring them along. Happy birthday, dude. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, now I'm going to have to send you one of those handwritten thank you cards. Oh, do these have names? Oh, yeah. This one is Manic Depression. Sympathy metal. So pop an element cartridge in the pummel, twist to crack it, and boom! Fire blade, ice blade, anything you want. Awesome. There's a sampler pack in the case, and the scabbard holds three at the ready. So cool. How long does it hold a charge for? Up to 15 minutes, depending on the quality of the card. 15 minutes? That's top rated. Oh, man. So, what? what's number two? Number two is Red House. Standard combat knife. But it's also a blood scent. Tag someone, oh. it'll give you a location of their whereabouts up to a kilometer. Oh, Good for four days, regardless of species. Nasty nice. What's number three? Midnight Lamp. Ooh, sounds evil in all the best ways. What does it do? Nothing. Nothing? Yet. It's a persona blade. <gasps> Your actions determine its development. <sighs> Clean slate. Red House killing floor and Midnight Lamp, huh? Looks like her Jimi Hendrix fixation is still in full swing. Jesus, these must have cost her a fortune. Yeah, well, your mom said since you were going to wait to have kids, she wanted you to get a legacy of your own going ASAP. Well, there you go. The Guillaume clan practical side. If you can't settle down, shake things up. And boy, am I going to shake things up at my job with these. So she says you took a job with the corporation? That's about the size of it, Jenkin. You're looking at Metadyne Corporation's newest and most beautiful squire. A squire? What? Dude! That's scut work. It is not scut work. It's honest work. It's certainly more honest than some of the other summer jobs I've had, believe you me. You're a friggin' PA. I am not a PA. I do a lot more than paperwork. I'm a detective and a bodyguard half the time. You know, I'll have you know this job is pretty full contact, hence the upgrade to the weapons I requested. I mean, I can't go into it too much, but this is as serious action as I've ever seen. Is that why you have the bandages? Well, we got into a scrape about a week back, and I ran afoul of something kind of nasty. It's not really anything... Does D-bag do something? He is not a D-bag. He's actually quite heroic when you get to know him. And yes, we ran into trouble, and yes, I got... 
got a little hurt, but it wasn't because he was being reckless with me. Or he was being a little bit reckless. But he wouldn't put me in any danger. He wouldn't put himself in. What happened? I can't really talk about it. And don't worry, I'm not being needlessly or recklessly endangered by my employers. Thanks. Better not be lying to me. Jenkin, you know me well enough to know that I never lie when I can brag, and right now I'm a big old box of brag. Good. Well, at least just brag as much as I can. So you can't talk about it? Not with you, no. Look, there's a certain amount of non-disclosure stuff I have to deal with, because we... Oh, that's just great. Look, what do you want from me? This is my job, all right? I mean, I have a lot of responsibility here. The secrets, the safety concerns for my employer, and for the night I'm working with. I can't just talk about things. But it helps if you told me something about it. Jenkin... We've had this conversation before, all right? I am under no obligation to disclose every aspect of my life to you. Whatever. If you don't want to tell me, that's fine. But if this guy does anything, I will beat the snot out of him. Look, I appreciate the chivalry, all right? But I do not need your protection. Not physically, not emotionally, and certainly not about this guy. Where's he from? He's... He's a human from the Earth. The Earth? Yes, the Earth. And he meets all of the criteria of a knight. He is noble, and he is... God damn it, I knew you were going to be like this. They told me you transferred to the clan office here six months ago. And I knew when I came here and I put in this request that you were going to be the one to make the delivery, and this topic of conversation was going to come up, and then I knew exactly what you were going to wind up thinking. Oh, you have no idea what I'm thinking. Really? Actually, you know, I think I do have a pretty good idea of what you're thinking. Because as I recall, we both have a vested interest in the Earth. And that little attitude difference we have in our relation to that place, that came between us once before. Or did you forget that? Whatever, dude. I'm a courier. You got your package. I'm done here. See ya. Jenkin, wait. Wait, come on. Come on, please. Look, I don't really want to leave on a bad note after we haven't seen each other for so long. I'm sorry. I Say hi to your boyfriend. He is not my boyfriend! Shit. And everything was going so well today, too. Well, triplets, what say I take you out for a drink? A nice, strong drink. Phillips possessed computer repair. Hello, surfers. Not in any mood, thanks. What's the matter? You didn't get your package? Please tell me the cookies are safe. I got what I came for, don't worry. I just had a run-in with an old acquaintance of mine, and it, well, it didn't go very well. We've got a history. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, um... So, what's up? Do you need anything? Yes, a drink, and I'm going to get one right now at a bar I know about three blocks from here. I'm going to send you the coordinates. Why don't you meet me there when you're done at the hotel? I am sort of done at the hotel. I'll meet you there from where I am now. Where are you now? I'm over at Metadyne's research lab. The computer said it was going to take about two hours to update completely, so I thought I'd use that time more wisely. Well, I can see why you can't do the report because the computer's updating, but why didn't you do the cross-indexing? Well, I was going to do that in the hotel room, but as it turns out, if you've got a laptop that's been infected with angelic power, as it updates via the internet, it makes strange, squishy, gobbling noises. Ooh, distracting. Exactly. I've got the paperwork on me, and I'm right outside Professor McCork's lab, so why don't you text me the address of the bar, I'll show up there when I'm done here, and we can go over this stuff together. Sounds good, and I've got my shiny, sharp new toys to show you. I expect to be impressed. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right, then. Uh, excuse me? Yes, sorry to bother you. I'm looking for Professor McCork. Uh, Professor McCork's a bit busy right now, if you must know. Well, do you know where I can find him? I kind of need to talk to him. Well, I'm afraid it may be some time. He's currently preoccupied, trapped as he is in a freezing cold laboratory in a building that never gets any bloody sunshine, going through stacks and stacks of research papers provided to him by his student assistants who couldn't get the most cloth-eared pieces of information correct if somebody shoved a bloody gun up their nose. Hmm. You must be Professor McCork. Hello, my name is Hanover Phillips. This is this a good time to talk? This is about as far from a good time to talk as it can possibly be without both of us actually being on fire. Well, sorry, but I work for the head office at Metadyne. They told me I needed to come to you to have some questions answered. Well, Rayburn told me there was a knight coming to see me. Yes, that's me. Sir Hanover Phillips, questing knight, Metadyne Corporation. You're a knight. This shocks you? Well, forgive me for saying so, but when I think about the courtly servants of noble causes, I don't tend to associate them with a man wearing trainers, a denim jacket, and a t-shirt that says meh. I'm very progressive. Well, congratulations then, Sir Phillips. You've just won yourself several moments of my unbelievably divided attention. Thanks. Do you have any information about an organization called Ave Nova? Uh. 
they seem to have a bunch of research facilities, or at least they were associated with them here in Baylor about 20 years ago. Uh, I've only lived in Baylor for 12 years myself. Yeah, but you've been doing research here that whole time. I was just wondering if the name ever came up in association with any sort of projects or any sort of developments of technology or anything. Look, I, look, I deal in meta-astrophysics, right, and geostationary satellites. So right? I don't get out that much. You know, This is something you could find in records of research, so why bother me with it? Because the Ave Nova Corporation seems to be deeply connected with angels. And I was told that was your field of expertise? Angels. Well, that's a bit different, isn't it? So, can you help me? Well, that depends entirely on what kind of help you need. How familiar are you with the Celestials? I've encountered them firsthand. <laughs> I don't think so. If you had encountered an angel, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Or at best, we'd be having it with you in a straitjacket. Well, you're the expert, but uh, believe me when I tell you, I've seen some things you wouldn't believe. Shadows and echoes, no doubt. If the stories are to be trusted, and I have no reason to doubt them, if you encountered a real Celestial... You'd be more scarred than you could possibly imagine. So you've never encountered them yourself? Not as such, no. But I've seen what they've left in their wake, and that's enough. So, uh, what can I help you with? Well, let's start simple. What are angels, anyway? Uh, simple? Well, why didn't you just kick off with the meaning of life, is your first question. Humor me. What do you know about Earth? Plenty. It's my home turf. Really? You're an Earthling. Well, at least then I don't have to give you a long history lesson. What do you know about Earth in relation to the angels themselves? Other than that's where people say they come from, not much. Ah, well, come from the Earth might be a bit of a stretch. Come through the Earth, definitely. How do you mean? Well, when any world reaches a certain level of civilization, the road connects to it. No one knows why exactly. One of the great unsolved mysteries of the universe. Still, it's things like that that keep people like me in business. But the Earth is a verge world. It's the boondocks, the outer reaches, the frontier. The road doesn't go anywhere from there. It only comes back to the Midlands. But, as you know, it's not the only way to travel. Do you know all the different ways of getting from place to place? Yeah, there's the road, the river, the jet stream, the underground, and the ocean. All connection points that take you from world to world. But all those worlds have one thing in common. They all sit in space. People tend not to think about space very much. I mean, you don't need a spaceship to travel from world to world, do you? All you need is a mood of transportation and time. Most people look up at the sky on a dark night and see the stars and think, I wonder what worlds are out there orbiting their little suns. I wonder if the road goes to any of them. I wonder if I'll ever go there. I look up and think, that's an awful lot of darkness. I wonder if anything lives out there. So the angels come from the stars. If only. I think they come from the gulf between. The void. Not exactly what you think of when you think of heaven, is it? So if there's space surrounding every world, why do they only come in from the Earth? Don't know. Another mystery to keep me in rent money, I suppose. Lucky you. There is one thing that worries me, though. Hmm? Celestials are one of the few beings that are able to travel in packs. What, you mean like wolves or something? No, no. Pacts. Binding legal agreements. Promises. Contracts. All you have to do is sign a piece of paper without reading it too carefully, or even shake hands on a promise and you've let them in. Somehow, we don't know how, they're allowed to infest things after that. People, places, inanimate objects. What's the number one export from the Earth to the Midlands? Technology. There you are. Unlike the rest of the worlds who use magic, your lot was denied any sort of supernatural powers for tens of thousands of years. So you found scientific and industrial solutions. I mean, who needs a magic spell to start a fire or to move a coach when you've got a lighter or an internal combustion engine? When the road reconnected to the Earth, all that wonderful technology was brought here, and it changed everything. Before, everything was handcrafted, and now everything's machine-built in factories. The ability to communicate over large distances was once only the realm of governments because it was so expensive, and now all that can be squashed down into a cell phone and sold cheaply. And the corporations who traded them, oh, did they ever get rich. So much so, they bought all the governments of the world out. Thousands of years of kingdoms and empires, simply purchased and replaced with business models in, what, half a century? Not that that's a bad thing, mind you. Certainly cut down the number of wars. I mean, it's hard to justify invading another country if that country is filled with potential customers. True. You said that troubled you, though. The angels can wield influence over inanimate objects through things like contracts, the stock and trade of corporations. If they've infected technology and that technology has been brought to the Midlands, they're already here. 
All right, if that's true, then that means they've been here for a hundred years. So why haven't they done anything bad yet? Well, those are the thoughts that keep you cool on a restless night, don't they? Hey, Professor, I had uh, some questions about these figures. I, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you had company. Uh, it's quite all right. We're just discussing a little bit of business here. Uh, Sir Hanover Phillips, uh, this is one of my student assistants, Lando Singh. Hi, pleased to meet you. Oh, uh, likewise. Sir Hanover Phillips? Yeah, I'm a knight. Uh, corporate knight, but yeah, I'm... I'm uh... Dude, that sounds really cool. Lando here is quite an expert on programming the computer we use to run the planetarium simulations. Oh, is that the big domed building over there you see when you come in? The very one. We use that for calibration purposes for the satellite communication systems. Although in about a week we'll be using it for a pet project of mine, maybe you'll be in town to see it. Possibly. What is it? Every night this summer we'll be doing an exhibit showing all of the nighttime skies of all the known worlds. Wow, that sounds really cool. Yeah, Landau here to program most of them himself, too, including your home planet of Earth. Uh, oh my uh, god, dude. Are you from Earth? Um, uh, yes. Yes, I am. Oh, awesome! Oh, He's uh, a bit of a freak for the Earth. I thought that might give him a thrill oh, if you don't mind. Oh. No, not at all. I mean, it's nice to get a positive reaction once in a while. Dude, are you kidding me? Earth is like the coolest place in the world. That's where all the sweetest tech comes from. Oh, well, you have got to come out for the show we do for the Earth skies. Well, oh, you I, gotta. Come on. It's the stars of the Earth. It's like a little slice of home. Well, you got to remember, I moved out to the Midlands when I was really young, so I don't really remember the skies all that clearly. And besides, you know, I, I lived in a city, so I could barely see them. Oh, duh, of course. You didn't have magic. You wouldn't have light pollution dampers. Still, you should come out and see. You can see the stars at night for the first time ever. Well, if you put it that way, maybe I will. When does this start? Next week. Ideally next week, provided Mr. Landau and his fellow students have cleaned up the planetarium by then. Beg pardon? Uh, he means the big end of the semester party. When the exams end, we use the planetarium as a big party space. we got, like, a light show and dancing and music and drinks. Oh, you should totally come to that. Well, I'll see him. Dude, please, I have so much I want to ask you about the Earth. I, I'll try. And that'll have to wait till later, I'm afraid, because we do have a lot of research to do around here in the meantime. However, Sir Phillips, I do have your contact information, and I'd like to send you my schedule. I'd like to continue our conversation from earlier, if it's all right with you. Yes, please. I have a lot more questions to ask you, and uh, I'll get out of your way now. Thanks so much for your time, Professor, and uh, it was really nice meeting you, Lane. Yeah, you too. I'll see you around town. Thanks. Guillaume's Bar and Grill, drink to your cook. So, you done already, sailor? Yeah, you could say that. Now, what's wrong with you? There are some developments and implications here. Large size implications or small size implications? Large, world size, you know, world spanning, kind of like we're all screwed type of implications. Mm, care to elaborate a bit? Not without a few stiff drinks. You gotten started on that yet or what? Well underway. Why don't you just give me a list of what you want? I'll have it ready here for when you arrive. <laughs> well, since you put it that way... Excuse me. Hold on a second, Hanover. Yes? Are you Miss Nero Guillaume? That's me. A courier asked me to deliver this to you. Oh, thank you very much. Not at all, madam. Hmm. Sorry about that, Hanover. What's up? Oh, somebody just sent me an envelope. It's probably from my mother. Oh. Probably wondering why I haven't sent her a thank you card already for... Nero? Hanover, where are you now? What? Where are you now? Right now, where are you? I, I'm out in front of the Metadyne Research Facility. I'm headed your way. Why? Get back inside the building and find someplace safe now. Why? What's wrong? Somebody just sent me a photograph. It's a picture of you going into the Research Institute. They know where both of us are. Who does? I don't understand. I don't know who it is. Now get back in the building. This is a warning. Wh whoever this is knows I'm here. How's going back in the building going to be any safer? It's safer than being out in the open. Now hurry, I'll be right there. All right, I'm going back inside right now, but be careful on the way over here. If this isn't a warning, we don't know which one of us they're after. I don't want to find out. <laughs> Hanover? Hanover, what happened? <gasps> Hanover, talk to me. Okay. What happened? I know which which one it was. I've, I've Hanover! Been, I've been shot. Oh, oh God. Uh, All right, hold on. I'm coming. Uh, Don't you dare die. You hear me? I'm You have been listening to The Account, A Tale of the Waking World, Relic Skies, Part 1. Written and performed by Cayenne Chris Conroy. The part of Dokes the DJ was played by Tom Campbell, who can be reached at tontocampbell.blogspot.com. The part of Jenkin was played by Dan Gould. Music heard at the beginning was Hunting for Witches, the Fury 666 remix by Block Party, www.blockparty.com, and appears courtesy of the Podsafe music resource musicalley.com. Kai and Chris Conroy can be reached at www.techdiff.com, techdiff at gmail.com, or at twitter.com slash techdiff. The account is a production of the Technical Difficulties Podcast and is registered under Creative Commons.
Do not adjust your sets. You're tuned to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Tomorrow on Mutual is Thursday Thrillers, our roundup of action, adventure, mystery, crime, drama, and thrillers, of course. Subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for every day of diverse audio tales. Or find the Thursday Thrillers feed in your favorite podcast players. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.